Good morning. It's good to be with you again on this Friday morning for morning prayer. All the folks at Holy Innocence who who tune in and also the people from High Point Episcopal Community Church, um, also known as Atonement. I'm missing my peeps and um, I'm, I'm missing everybody because of this um, COVID situation that we have going, but um, just wanted to say I miss my people. So I'm sitting on the porch this morning and um, try not to actually swing too much and make you dizzy with this <laughs> recording, um, but it's one of my favorite spots. So I thought I'd have you here with me today. And if you want to mark your psalm with a little bookmark today, uh, the psalm is 106. And it's on page 741 in the prayer book. If you want to bookmark that, it'll be good. And the Old Testament reading is from Leviticus chapter 23, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus chapter 23. For another bookmark there. And the gospel reading is from Matthew. We've been hanging out in Matthew. It's chapter 7. So with our ten fingers in ten different places, let us begin with our um, opening acclamation on page 77 in the prayer book, um, if that's where you are finding yourself today, or in the pamphlet from the church. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. On this day, the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord is risen indeed. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. On page 83, let us say today the Pascha Nostrum, Christ our Passover. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia! Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Alleluia. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia. And now for our psalm appointed, 106 on page 741. Together. Hallelujah. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Who can declare the mighty acts of the Lord? or show forth all his praise. Happy are those who act with, just, with justice and always do what is right. Remember me, O Lord, with the favor you have for your people, and visit me with your saving help, that I may see the prosperity of your elect and be glad with the gladness of your people, that I may glory with your inheritance. We have sinned as our forefather, forebears did. We have done wrong and dealt wickedly. In Egypt, they did not consider your marvelous works, nor remember the abundance of your love. They defied the Most High at the Red Sea. But he saved them for his name's sake, to make his power known. He rebuked the Red Sea and dried it up, and he led them through the deep as through a desert. He saved them from the hand of those who hated them 
and redeemed them from the hand of the enemy. The waters covered their oppressors, not one of them was left. Then they believed his words and sang him songs of praise. But they soon forgot his deeds and did not wait for his counsel. A craving seized them in the wilderness, and they put God to the test in the desert. He gave them what they asked, but sent leanness into their soul. They envied Moses in the camp, and Aaron, the Holy One of the Lord. The earth opened and swallowed Dathan, and covered the company of Abarim. Fire blazed up against their company, and flames devoured the wicked. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. So the first lesson appointed for today is from the Old Testament. And I said that it was Leviticus chapter 23, and that might have made you doze off already, but um, I can only say that it's one of my favorite texts. Um, Leviticus 23 is one of more than one text that has uh, um, guidance for um, Passover. But this one today places us exactly where we are right now. This is the time from um, Passover to Pentecost, from Passover to the Festival of First Fruits, which is what we call Pentecost. And so it's the great 50 days of Easter. These are our historical roots. It's not that, you know, we drummed up this great idea, um, but it is in this the cycle of harvest festivals that we celebrate resurrection and our life in Christ. There's this bounty, this wonderful provision, and this food for our souls. Anyways, <laughs> I won't go on. Uh, so, Leviticus 23, 1 through 22. So listen for those those um, times in our church calendar that come from this text. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the people of Israel and say to them, These are the appointed festivals of the Lord that you shall proclaim as holy convocations, my appointed festivals. Don't you love a God that points, appoints festivals? <laughs> I'm in. For six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is a Sabbath of complete rest, a holy convocation. You shall do no work. It is a Sabbath to the Lord throughout your settlement. These are the appointed festivals of the Lord, the holy convocation, which you shall celebrate at the time appointed for them. In the first month, on the fourteenth day of the month, at twilight, there shall be a Passover offering to the Lord. And on the fifteenth day of the same month is the festival of unleavened bread to the Lord. For seven days you shall eat unleavened bread. On the first day you shall have a holy convocation. You shall not work at your occupations. For seven days you shall present the Lord's offerings by fire. On the seventh, on the seventh day there shall be a holy convocation. You shall not work at your occupations. The Lord spoke to Moses, Speak to the people of Israel and say to them, When you enter the land that I am giving you and you reap its harvest, you shall bring the sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest to the priest. He shall raise the sheaf before the Lord so that you may find acceptance. On the day after the Sabbath, the priest shall raise it. On the day when you raise the sheaf, you shall offer a lamb a year old without blemish as a burnt offering to the Lord. And the grain offering with it shall be two-tenths of an ephah of choice flour mixed with oil, an offering by fire of pleasing odor to the Lord. And the drink offering with it shall be of wine, one-fourth of a hen. You shall eat no bread or parched grain or fresh ears until that very day, until you have brought the offering of your God. It is a statute forever throughout your generations in all your settlements. And from the day after the Sabbath, from the day on which you bring the sheaf of the elevation offering, you shall count off seven weeks. They shall be complete. You shall count until the day of the seventh Sabbath, fifty days. 
Then you shall present an offering of new grain to the Lord. You shall bring from your settlements two loaves of bread as an elevation offering, each made of two tenths of an ephah. They shall be of choice flour, baked with leaven, as first fruits to the Lord. You shall present with the bread seven lambs, a year old, without blemish, one young bull, and two rams. They shall be a burnt offering to the Lord, along with their grain offering and their drink offerings, an offering by fire of pleasing odor to the Lord. You shall also offer one male goat for a sin offering, and two male lambs, a year old, as a sacrifice of well-being. The priest shall raise them with the bread of the first fruit, as an elevation offering before the Lord, together with the two lambs. They shall be holy to the Lord for the priest. On that same day you shall make proclamation. You shall hold a holy convocation. You shall not work at your occupations. This is a statute forever in all your settlements throughout your generations. When you reap the harvest of your land, you shall not reap to the very edges of your fields, or gather the gleanings of your harvest. You shall leave them for the poor and for the alien. I am the Lord your God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us say together a song to the Lamb. It's Canticle 18. It's in your pamphlet, or you can find it in the prayer book on page 93. Splendor and honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord our God. For you created everything that is, and by your will they were created and have their being. And yours by right, O Lamb that was slain, for with your blood you have redeemed for God, from every family, language, people, and nation, a kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so to him who sits upon the throne, and to Christ the Lamb, we worship and praise dominion and splendor forever and forevermore. The Gospel appointed for today is from Matthew chapter 7, verses 1 through 12. Do not judge, so that you may not be judged. For with the judgment you make, you will be judged, and the measure you give will be the measure you get. Why do you see the speck in your neighbor's eye, but do not notice the log in your own eye? Or how can you say to your neighbor, Let me take the speck out of your eye, while the log is in your own eye? You hypocrite, first take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your neighbor's eye. Do not give what is holy to the dogs, and do not throw your pearls before swine, or they will trample them underfoot and turn and maul you. Ask, and it will be given to you. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches finds, and for everyone who knocks the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for bread, will give a stone? Or if the child asks for a fish, will give a snake? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good things to those who ask him? In everything, do to others as you would have them do to you. For this is the law and the prophet. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the song of the redeemed on page 94, together. O ruler of the universe, Lord God, great deeds are they that you have done, surpassing human understanding. Your ways are ways of righteousness and truth, O king of all the ages. Who can fail to do your homage, Lord, and sing the praises of your name? For you only are the Holy One. All nations will draw near and fall down before you, because your just and holy works have been revealed. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, 
and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let us say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we continue with the Lord's Prayer. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. So a collect that I'd like to share today is on page 99. A collect for the renewal of life. O God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning. Drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your law, and guide our feet into the way of peace. That having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And back to um, the Collect for Mission, which is in our booklet. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hardwood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. Our prayers in the time of the coronavirus. For all who have contracted coronavirus, we pray for care and healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who are particularly vulnerable, we pray for the safety and protection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who experience fear or anxiety, we pray for peace of mind and spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For affected families who are facing difficult decisions between food on the table or public safety, we pray for policies that recognize their plight. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who do not have adequate health insurance, 
We pray that no family will face financial burdens alone. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who are afraid to access care due to immigration status, we pray for recognition of the God-given dignity of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our brothers and sisters around the world, we pray for shared solidarity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For public officials and decision makers, we pray for wisdom and guidance. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, during this time, may your church be a sign of hope, comfort, and love to all. Grant peace, grant comfort, grant healing. Be with us, Lord. Amen. The General Thanksgiving Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, and in our lives by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit we honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now I'm going to sit here and swing for a while and think about all of you. And I look forward to being with you on Sunday. And um, I will have the privilege of being in the chapel at Holy Innocence to deliver the homily. I know I... Um, I delivered the homily on the fifth Sunday in Lent, and it was rather long. <laughs> I promise I'll be shorter. See you all. <laughs>